Well, good morning and welcome to our service for the 9th of August. We're going to start with the hymn, I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Romans 10, we're encouraged, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How much we have to give thanks for, for all the Lord has done. So let us hope share together in saying this opening prayer of thanks. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we humbly thank you for all your gifts so freely given, for life and health and safety, for work and rest and friendship, and for the wonder of creation. 
Above all, we praise you for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for his death and resurrection, for your life-giving spirit and the hope of sharing in your glory. Fill our hearts with all joy and peace in believing, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for inspiring all Scripture by the Holy Spirit. By your Spirit, help us so to hear your Holy Word, that we may be better equipped for every good work. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first Bible reading is taken from Genesis chapter 37, verses 12 to 28. Now his brothers had gone to graze their father's flocks near Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, As you know, your brothers are grazing the flocks near Shechem. Come, I'm going to send you to them. Very well, he replied. So he said to him, Go and see if all is well with your brothers and with the flocks, and bring word back to me. Then he sent him off from a valley of Hebron. When Joseph arrived at Shechem, a man found him wandering around in the fields and asked him, what are you looking for? He replied, I'm looking for my brothers. Can you tell me where they are grazing their flocks? They have moved on from here, the man answered. I heard them say, let's go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But they saw him in a distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into the cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe the honored robe he had was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. Their camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh and they were on their way to take them down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's seal him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood. His brothers agreed. So when Midianite merchants came by, his brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites, who took him to Egypt. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 85. 
O Lord, you were gracious to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people. You pardoned all their sin. You put aside all your wrath. You turned away from your hot hand. Restore us again, O God of our salvation, and put away your displeasure towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness will meet together. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the earth, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its plenty. Righteousness will go before him, and will make a way for his steps. Today's second reading is taken from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 36. Immediately, Jesus made the disciple get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the wave because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret, and when the men of that place recognized Jesus, they sent word to all the surrounding country. People brought all their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not so long ago, a friend that I knew at primary school contacted me on Facebook and said that uh, he remembered that I came to his sixth birthday party and that I had given him a bar of soap in the form of a deep-sea diver. Now, <laughs> 
I don't, I don't remember going to the party. Uh, I don't really remember him. Uh, it was uh, 60 years or more ago anyway. It's funny how uh, the things that you remember uh, from your childhood, inconsequential things. Uh, I went to Sunday school at Holy Trinity in Hobart, the very church at uh, which Roger's father was rector in the 1970s. Small world. And it was a well-run Sunday school. A lot of kids attending. And each Sunday school lesson was accompanied by a large coloured picture of the story we were considering. Uh, for instance, I remember a, a picture of Jesus teaching the crowds uh, on the shore while he sat a little way off in a fishing boat on the Sea of Galilee. And I remember when we did... Jesus walking on the water, our gospel for today, we were shown a very dramatic darkened scene of waves whipped up by the wind with Jesus standing majestically on the water, the fishing boat tossed about with frightened disciples clinging to the sides and Peter boldly hoping to reach Christ by walking on the water. He's starting to sink and he's crying out in fear. Now I was learning to swim at the time so the picture and the story made a really big impact on me. And I could totally sympathise with Peter. What a brave man. It's always good to know where the gospel stories fit into each gospel's unfolding narrative. The evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, just don't throw the individual stories and sayings of Jesus into their Gospels at random. Each of those four evangelists have a sense of what they want to say to their readers and how their story contributes to their unfolding message. Now, in the case of Jesus walking on the water, Matthew and Mark have the same ordering of the stories that precede this one. First, Mark and Matthew tell the story of the execution of John the Baptist by Herod Antipas, a rogue and a thug. Then they tell the story of the feeding of the 5,000. Then they tell the story of Jesus walking on the water and then the landing in Gennesaret and the healing of the sick there. Luke, on the other hand, for some reason, does not include the walking on the water, but John does, straight after he records the feeding of the 5,000, in agreement with Matthew and Mark. Now, I would like to know why Luke doesn't include the story. He must have known it because he knows Mark's gospel, but that's, that's a sermon for a different occasion. So, what does the story mean? Dame Edna Everidge would say that it was a spooky story. It's dark. The Sea of Galilee has turned rough and threatening. The disciples are not making any headway against waves and wind. And then, in the darkness, they see Jesus walking on the water, coming out to meet them. They don't know it's him, and understandably, they think it's a ghost Human beings aren't gifted with the ability to walk on water, but who knows what supernatural beings are capable of doing. So it's a scene of terror like a haunting. And you can sense the fear of the disciples. And we know that we would be feeling exactly the same terror had we been there in the boat. But, of course, we disciples of Christ are always in the boat. Always assailed by a sea of fears, uncertainties and doubts. But in the boat, nevertheless, we have a place that offers some protection and some security. Indeed, we are in the boat when we come to church. We sit, as we're sitting today, in part of a church called the Nave. 
And that word nave is derived from the Latin word navis, the word for boat. It's like we are sitting in an upturned boat. When we look up at the ceiling and we can see the pattern of the beams and the planks of wood, it's like we're sitting in the boat. If you go to a Greek Orthodox church, on the other hand, there are stars on the ceiling. We're transported to heaven when we go to a Greek Orthodox church. But go to a Western church like St Anne's, we are at sea. Back to the little boat with the haunted disciples. Don't be afraid, Jesus calls out. It is I. Now, Matthew, Mark and John all agree that this is what Jesus says. And then he says, take heart. All three agree. Take heart. You come to church. We don't leave all our fears and doubts and uncertainties behind. Indeed, we bring our luggage with us. And here are Jesus' words of encouragement to us. Don't be afraid. It is I. Take heart. Well, Peter perks up. He's bold. He's prepared to take risks. He says, tell me to walk to you on the water and I will do it. And Jesus says, well, come then. Come on. And he gets out and he starts to walk to Jesus. But he sees the waves. He feels the relentless wind and he panics and he starts to sink. Lord, save me, he cries out, his confidence deserting him. Now, that's a cry that rings out down through all history and through all time, through all the corridors and centuries of time. And we too cry out with the psalmist, save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck, Psalm 69, verse 1. Let me be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Do not let the flood sweep over me, Psalm 69, 13 to 14. And Jesus does save Peter. He reaches out, grasps him by the hand. They get into the boat and suddenly the wind is cut off and the danger and the crisis is over. And the disciples worship Jesus because he is, as they have so graphically seen, their saviour and their Lord. Now, friends, this story is about an encounter far more awesome than an encounter with a ghost. It is an epiphany an encounter with God himself. He manifests himself there on the water. It is no accident that Jesus says, it is I, or literally in Greek, I am, I am. These are the very words that God speaks to Moses out of the burning bush when he is asked what his name is, he says, I am, I am. This is God's very name and we hear it in this story. Now this connection of God and the sea, it's all there in the Old Testament. And Jesus speaks these words of divine disclosure on the water, on the sea. In the Old Testament, the psalmist says, the voice of God is upon the waters, Psalm 29, verse 3. In Genesis, the Spirit of God moves over the face of the deep, the primeval sea, the sink of all that is chaotic and unruly and threatening. Again, the psalmist says, your path was in the sea, your path through the mighty waters, Psalm 77, verse 19. Here the psalmist is recalling the victory of God over the Egyptians at the Red Sea. And that redemption prefigures our salvation. And Peter's, of course, there on the Sea of Galilee when he met God face to face. 
It is God who is walking on the water, making his way on the sea and delivering his people, even us, from ruin and shipwreck to the rich and full life that he promises in the kingdom of God. The promise is for us that when we pass through the waters, he will be with us, Isaiah 43 verse 2. He'll be with us for we are his. When Jesus got into the boat, as we've already seen, the disciples worshipped him. And that is a fitting response since this is an encounter with one who is both God and man and who in the age to come will calm the sea forever. The sea will be no more, says the book of Revelation in chapter 21. So we see that God's power and authority are used to give fullness and abundance of life, power and authority bringing well-being for all eternity. There is no storm, no turbulence that could rub us of life in God's presence. Now one more thing. Not all that many verses before our story we have the story of another with power and authority, namely Herod Antipas. And we see how he uses his authority and his power. He uses power and authority to destroy, to snuff out the life of John the Baptist, lest he lose face lest he look weak and foolish. He would rather do murder than do what is right. And it is ever thus with the great ones of history and of the present. They are destructive, they are violent, they are full of menace, always threatening like the restless, menacing sea. But now we see Christ feeding the 5,000, saving his people from being swamped by the waters. He is present with us in the boat. It is the presence of God himself. He is the great I am whose will it is to do good, to bring life, to affirm and to dignify, and ultimately to save. Thank you, Mark. We're going to reflect with St Andrew's Cathedral Choir on the way he has saved us as they sing for us, O Sacred Head, Sore Wounded.
Anglican Aid is the, um, the Ministry for Relief of the Diocese here. They've sent us a uh, little video about one of the things that they uh, seek to do in Pakistan. And we're going to watch this video which uh, speaks about the work uh, to help those trapped in, um, in, in, in effective slavery in the brick kilns around Lahore. That's just one of the many projects that uh, Anglican Aid supports. Uh, you can uh, see more on their website. They are at the moment, and uh, you'll see on the screen the, uh, the slide with a little bit of information, seeking to support uh, those struggling with the COVID virus. And um, if you're interested in supporting the Ministry of Anglican Aid, and particularly that, or the work in Pakistan, then the, you can go to their website and uh, give through that. There is some information in their prayer diary. I think there are still some out in the, in the church foyer if you're interested in getting one of those. Let's now confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Although we are the people of God, Scripture reminds us that we still sin. We need to confess our failures knowing that the Lord Jesus died for us and intercedes for us with the Father. So let us draw near to God who freely forgives through his infinite goodness and mercy and pray to him with sincerity and confidence. Heavenly Father, 
You have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have gone our own way and broken your laws. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you and to please you more and more. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God desires not the death of a sinner, but that, no, that none should perish, but that all, that all should turn to Christ and live. In response to his call, we acknowledge our sins. God pardons those who humbly repent and truly believe the gospel. Therefore, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together we pray the prayer for today. Grant to us, Lord, we beseech you, the spirit to think and do always such things as are right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together, and the response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Loving God, hear our prayers. We give thanks for all your blessings, the gift of life and loved ones, for being able to come together in this way, that we personally are free of the virus that is causing so much distress to the world. That for many of us, we do not have fear of losing our jobs, that we can feed our families without distress, and for all the things we take for granted day by day. Help us, Lord, to be mindful every minute of every day of those who are not as fortunate as us, to the many people around the world who are fearful of what tomorrow holds for them who have lost loved ones, are hungry and afraid, looking for work, stressed about having money to buy food. Be with these people, Lord, and give them courage and hope for relief of their fears, that things will change for not only themselves, but for their families and loved ones. But loving Father, give us courage, help us, to maintain the strength and fortitude to carry on until this situation comes to an end and we can leave our homes and mingle with others without fear. Help us to th think constantly of the consequence of our every action and what harm our mindlessness can impose on those around us. Remembering, Lord, that whether they are our loved ones or the loved ones of others, they are precious in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all who care for us, our Rector Roger, Lynn, the members of our worship team, and especially at this time, our IT team, for the time and effort they are putting into our online service. We ask your blessing upon our new way services and pray that it will not be long before we all feel confident enough to come together to give thanks for your love and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that here in Australia, we will be able to contain the second round of this affection and help each one of us to accept responsibility for our actions and put aside selfish wants to remember that you have told us to love our neighbours as ourselves and thereby work with authorities to do as we are asked. 
We pray for your people everywhere. And we ask, Lord, that country by country, they will be able to con control the spread of the virus and thereby save the lives of loved ones. We bring to you all who have already lost loved ones. Heal their hearts, Lord, and give them strength. We give thanks for all who are day by day placing their own and their families' lives, lives at risk to care for others. Keep them safe, Lord, we beseech thee. We bring to you all who are working day and night to develop a vaccine, and we ask, Lord, that you will inspire their minds to new ideas and that they will continue to communicate and inspire each other in their selfless effort to obtain the goal for the good of all mankind. We pray that it will be successfully developed in the new f near future and it will totally wipe out this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for young people everywhere that they will not lose confidence in their future and continue to work and study for a better tomorrow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the lost and alone, for all with special needs, and we bring to you all those on our prayer list. Help them, loving God, to feel the love we share for them through our prayers. We pray for our own loved ones, our friends and our families, and we give thanks for the love and care and help to us. Help us to return with abundance this love and care, the gift of sharing their lives. And loving God, we bring to you ourselves that our lives may be a witness unto you and may it be acceptable to you to live and worship as you would have us do, to pray, to read your word and reach out to others to tell of your love and care for all mankind. We give thanks for all who have gone before us and shaped our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, loving God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God be your comfort and your strength. God be your hope and support. God be your light and your way. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and giver of life remain with you now and forever. Amen. Close our service with the hymn, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. 